Like Kate, I also had ovarian cancer. It was March 23rd, 2011, just two years ago, when I woke up after a, eh, it was a planned hysterectomy, right? We didn't know which way it was gonna go. Could be just, you know, okay, and I would just go into uh, menopause quickly, <laughs> or I would be faced with something else. And so when I woke up and my beloved husband had that, he had that look on his face and said probably the most difficult thing that he ever had to say to me, which is, you have cancer. And I was still under a lot of drugs, recovering from the operation, so I didn't quite really hear it, and it took a couple hours to really get it. But that's the moment that I decided that I was a cancer survivor. It was a decision that I made at that point, that I was gonna survive this. I ended up looking like this. I took it probably in my fifth month of chemotherapy, and I, I wanted to capture this journey and this experience, and I think really says a lot about what I did and what happened and the experience of being with cancer and dancing with cancer, sometimes I call it. But this was my attitude, alive and kicking cancer. The message I wanna send here is this. We cannot control what happens to us. We are not in charge, but we can shape our experience. We can decide how it's gonna be for us. We may not be able to determine the outcome the steps in between, and they weren't always pretty. In fact, there were some really dark days for me. But some of the techniques, some of the ideas, some of the goofiness that I'm gonna share with you helped me not only get through it, survive, but I think very much have a thriver attitude. The other thing about shaping your experience is your attitude. Again, you can't control everything that happens, but you most certainly can control your attitude. Now, I will tell you that um, for someone who has a good attitude, right, mostly, most of the time, right, Byron? Okay, some of the time. But I have a reputation for positivity. I, I had a hard time in the early days, and my attitude was not positive. And I started telling my story and repeating all the horrible things, and I finally had uh, called a colleague to see if she would substitute for a speaking engagement. And she said, well, how are you doing? What's going on? And I started in the saga. Complain, pity party, negativity. Here's what happened. Here's what happened. And she said, I can't believe I'm talking to Kathy McAfee. I mean, I've always thought you were such a positive person. I mean, I'm really surprised. And she wasn't being patronized. She was just reacting out loud. And that's when it hit me. Like, stop. Stop. Shift. Change. The pity party's over. Negativity won't help me. So I shifted my attitude, planning to live as fully as possible until further notice, as fully as possible. And really the whole the context for this was that Anne was having trouble planning. And she's a business person, she's future minded. And like, yeah, can you make an engagement in three months? How will you feel in six? Will you be alive in a year? So you end up having this conflict about future planning. So Don's advice to Anne, and Anne's advice to, to me was, just plan to live until further notice, which really means we live in the present. We live today, and here we are today. This is all that matters right now. Being together, being in Kate's spirit and presence, honoring her, helping others. Tomorrow is tomorrow, and it will come, you know, God willing, but that's all we have. I wanna just point out, how can I help you? which I actually teach in networking skills to professionals. You must ask people that question or you must be able to answer that question specifically. But when you have cancer and when you've come out of surgery and when you're weak, it is a burden to answer that question. Do not ask cancer patients how you can help. Just do it. Community, another very big part of my experience. Now some people, uh, we all have different ways of going through this experience and some people like it quietly and privately. And I respect that completely, but being a pretty much a raging extrovert um, and again watching the movie Wit, I, I just couldn't go it alone. So I tapped into my network. And when my oncologist said there was a 100% chance that I would lose my hair, no wiggle room, like not me, look at this mop, right? No way, this guy's gonna hang in there. 100% chance. 
You can either lose it and watch it fall down the drain and have it be emotionally upset, or I thought I could do something differently. So what I did was I organized very quickly, with the help of a lot of people in the community, a hair raiser, where I was gonna shave my head for charity, raise money, in this case for a girls' education, girls' school in Kibera, Africa, in Kenya, and we came up with the slogan, Hair Razor, which I just love. Bald is beautiful, but educated is gorgeous. So in terms of really taking your power back and shaping your experience, there's nothing like shaving your head. <laughs>